difference in conversion rate. So not only just within the franchise, but within the group. So let's say you have 10 making up Volkswagen sites within the group. There'll still be a huge normal distribution of quality. The car manufacturers sell direct through us who have a lead handling center or, or pass it on to their own dealers. Still, these are humans at the end of the day. There is a difference in quality. And what Carwell does is bias towards well, what's the point sending it to that person or that, that side? They're not very good. Quantifiably, they're not very good. Mm. Send it to this one instead. They've got more chance of converting you into the brand. So we move the, the, the customer base around based on that. But at the end of the day, Carwell is not e-commerce. We are still introducing a human, a consumer, to another human, dealer, car manufacturer, leasing company. And how they handle that, that is a huge differentiator. And welcome to the AM News Show. Um, thanks for joining us. Um, please do press subscribe to ensure that you get to keep keep tabs on all the shows that we're producing. Um, today, we're joined by James Hind, who's the founder and chief executive of CarWow. Nice to nice to see you, James. Thank you very much for having me. Interesting um, sort of 18 months for the for the industry um, with car supply issues um, being a particular challenge for, for dealers. Um, as, a, as a starter for 10, perhaps talk to us about some of the work that you've been able to do at CarWow to, to help dealers manage that situation, give them the support that they, they need. Yeah, it's certainly been a, a, an interesting 18 months, lots of change. I mean, we, CarWow's adapted not because of a strategy that we had that we followed all the way through, Car was adapted because of the market. So if you wind back 18 months ago, or call it COVID, we were pure new cars, almost all our revenue coming from dealers as opposed to car manufacturers, and then we had to change. Uh, so many things we've done. Lots of work with car manufacturers now directly. We acquired a company that helps consumers sell their car and helps dealers acquire stock, which is their biggest problem, obviously, at the moment. Uh, and now a, a more recent push into used cars, purely because consumers struggle with the delivery times for new cars, We've got to give them an alternative. Dealers can't get hold of new car stock. They want to shift their used car stock quickly. So we have adapted massively. Again, not some super smart strategy we came up with. The market shaping us, to be honest. Okay. And you mentioned consumers. I think the initial initial shock for consumers that they couldn't just go out and buy the cars they wanted has maybe subsided a little bit. I think more and more kind of understanding that and perhaps aware of the problems. Yeah, they've, but, re- they've read about it in the press. They, yeah. they know that like, if you wind back, I don't know, nine months a year ago, it was news to them to say, what do you mean I can't get a car for six months, 12 months? Now they go in understanding that, that that's the reality of the, of the market. And have you seen any changes in the behavior of, of consumers over the time? Yeah, huge. The, the killer for new cars is delivery time. Yeah, the prices have gone up a bit and there's no discounts anymore on new cars. That's not a problem. It's, I can't get a car for 12 months. I'm going to buy used instead because I need a car. And often these car purchases are sometimes driven by obviously a PCP change or a lease en- ending, but often just a kind of, I want to change my car. I want to do it now. I don't want to wait around. Mm-hmm. People have got used to that sort of rapid fulfillment, I guess, and rapid satisfaction, delivery. haven't they? Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. And, and, and it's a, I think having that friction of having to wait, it will put some people off com- completely and they'll think, okay, well, I won't bother. Uh, mm. I'll come back. I'll come back at some point down the line. But being able to give them an alternative into a similar used car, even if the price is, call it nigh on the same as the new car, for new car customers, they're happy to do it. And in terms of the dealers that you work with and the stock that they're, they're able to access, have you seen changes in that? I mean, we, we've we heard, obviously, internally of some dealers looking at older stock oh, than yeah. they would have done tra- traditionally. Yeah, I mean, broadly speaking, our franchise dealer partners are probably pre, pre-pandemic pre looking at one to three-year-old. Now, almost everyone is at least one to five, some even franchise one to seven. Uh, and that's un- uh, well unheard of before. And even some of the independent big supermarkets that we work with, again, shifting their age by a couple of years at least. Are there any parameters set on sell your car in terms of age? Or no, on, on sell your car, it's anything you can think of. So we, ha- we, we because we have so many customers who came to us for a new car, they're generally the stock is a newer stock. doesn't mean we have 1970s Rolls Royces or, or bangers because um, there's a market for everything. Yeah, the, There are dealers who specialize in certain niches and and we cater for all consumers. But the, bi- the bias, just because we naturally attract that customer, is the slightly newer stuff. 
How's how's it affected uh, you know the customer base in t- in terms of car retailers that CarWow deals yeah. with? Because I imagine that's changed dramatically yeah, as hugely. people flock in to sell your car. Yeah. So again, we were only franchise dealers for new cars. That was all of our supply. Now it's independent car supermarkets, the larger independents as well, some of the car manufacturers who sell used direct as well. And they're both sourcing stock from us and now listing their used cars uh, to sell. So it's a real, a, real shift in who It's a full, uh, yeah, full yeah. circle as well now that yeah. you, you've got catering for the whole market. Exactly. And, and whole new people in the industry that we, we'd never, frankly, spoken to before. I think, I mean, we, we recently did uh, a Q&A yeah. and, and, you know, really, really pleased to see how that, that came out. It was great to, to discuss a little bit about how, how CarWow is evolving that we'll, we'll go into a little bit more today. But, you know, the, I guess, like you say, that the business has evolved because of the market and, and so have, you know, so have retailers' view of, of what CarWow is and, and how it operates and what value it brings you know, I, I guess you as a business feel closer to the sector now. It's understandable after so many years, but you, you're close to the sector now and have a lot more affinity with the sector oh, than, right. ever, than ever before. Yeah, because if you wind back four or five years ago when CarWow was r- relatively new to the market, growing very, very fast, we were quite disruptive. We weren't liked by, I'll be honest and say, probably the majority, but we were partly a function of the market at the time. Massive, massive oversupply. Dealers having to pre-register, not enough customers, and we were a function where they could, rather than pre-register cars themselves, sell them direct to a customer. And yes, it would be a, bit, a, a fairly big discount back in the day. Consumers loved it. The dealers who were slightly more forward-thinking or slightly more aggressive in their targets, they loved it as well. But we'll be honest, the majority did not like what we did. And we've evolved a lot since then, again, partly driven by the market, partly driven by changes that we've made to our model. The, the, biggest, the biggest one being, we used to charge upon a sale, everyone would pay £300 per sale, and Carwell couldn't control the pricing. It would be illegal for us to try and say, sorry, Mr. Dealer, you can't give this discount. So you'd, you might have one dealer, uh, the dealers always said it was in Scotland, it wasn't always in Scotland, <laughs> but you'd have one dealer in Scotland who would blow their brains out to hit a target. They'd set, let's say, I don't know, Volkswagen Golf. Everyone would be selling it about 10%, say. Someone would say 12%. Once you've seen that 2% extra discount, as a customer, you're going to go to that dealer because the, yeah. the delta's so big. Low, hundreds, literally, in a matter of days, would contact that dealer. They'd sell their one or two cars they need. They'd, frankly, piss off a lot of customers, and they set a very low market price for that car for that period. We couldn't control it. Now we charge everyone per inquiry. So if a dealer wants to go ahead of the pack so to say and the kind of there's no discounts anymore but if there were it's going to cost them a fortune so again we're not controlling it but we'll make them aware that if you do go very aggressive on discount it's going to cost you a lot of money are you sure you want to do this so subtle change but massive impact on the market real so, real big so that has sort of leveled or yeah leveled the playing field in 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 some ways i mean you, you mentioned about yeah the early days where dealers reacted quite quite badly to you i remember conversations in, at the time saying well if if the if the market changes and the volume isn't there then carware will be out, yeah, yeah. out of business um, and obviously it's good to see that you have evolved with the market and you are you you've kind of found new channels and, and ways of ways of still providing an essential service for dealers well that that's it on on New car at the moment discounts are minuscule, if anything, um, and we're selling more cars than ever. And we've always said it's not all about price. Not all it is that believe that, but it, 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 the reality is people just want to know it's a fair price, it's a market price. That, 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 that's still comfortable. There'll be a 10% of consumers who want to find the cheapest wherever they can, and they'll go through fire to get there, but that's minuscule. And that's why we love the shift to the agency model. It's much, much better for the consumer. It's much simpler. Uh, and frankly, car benefits because the car manufacturer gets so much close to the customer. They can see what's driving them actual sales. Uh, and the, the car manufacturer part of our business is very, very large. And anyone who sells direct is using car uh, And we're a significant part of, their, uh, part of their marketing budget and sales, uh, percentage of their sales as well. So, yeah, big, big change in how we operate. Big change in our perception as well within the industry. Um, and there's still work to do on that with some of the people who, who we haven't worked with for three, four years. But yeah, now, now we're not just talking to them about new car. We're talking about stock sourcing, which is their biggest problem. And we're talking to them about used cars as well. So is, is that was the foresight of that coming part of the reason that you've got closer to, to manufacturers over time? 
Uh, I could lie and say this again. This is all some super clever strategy. The reality is the pandemic hit. Newcastle supply was and demand, we thought at the time, was kind of knocked dead. Mm. So we thought, OK, we've got to adapt. Our biggest challenge was always this. We can't control the discount. So we made that change uh, three or four months into the pandemic. Massive focus on the car manufacturer side. And then we acquired this business to help you uh, help dealers stop uh, source. So again, a function of, frankly, being agile and adapting to the market and adapting to what our partners wanted. That, you, you just were the, used the word that I was going to use. The, the, the story we're getting is of a business that is agile and able to adapt quickly. What, what would you say are, I guess, the kind of structural secrets to, to, to enable that to happen? I think the biggest thing is probably twofold. One is we have massive consumer reach. So we have, I mean, it's the world's largest uh, car channel for cars on YouTube. We have 10 million visits a month to our content, our written content, which is until recently all about new cars. So we have that customer base. They do tend towards the new sector. So we didn't need to go out and spend a fortune on marketing to get them to sell their car, to get into used cars. And then the second thing is it's, it, we are a technology company. Uh, it's, we, we, we can't scale unless we're, we're grounded in tech. And doing these things, that we're reusing big parts of our technology. So things like the... The way that consumers interact with dealers via our platform, it's the same for new cars as it is for used as it is for sell your car. We're just repurposing the same stuff. That, that's what allows us to be agile. That and some fortuitous timing, I'd say, in terms of when we raise money. Uh, we were lucky that we raised money going into, again, not planning it, but ahead of the pandemic, we raised money. We raised a lot more money back in December ahead of this kind of slight global meltdown in Ukraine, et cetera. Again, fortuitous timing, to be honest. And I think, well, we we did touch on how could I not mention the possibility of of becoming a, a public uh, publicly listed company at some point. Yeah, that, that's that's our plan over time. I mean, now we've raised a lot of money privately uh, through various venture capital, private equity, car manufacturers. Um, now's not the time whatsoever to go public um, for anyone. It's not a fun time to be a public company right now, but the market's change. Who knows in 12, 18 months. I mean, the market rebounded insanely strongly after lockdowns, which no one predicted. Who knows? Who knows? Absolutely. As, I mean, as we've heard that, you know, your ties with manufacturers have become become a lot closer. And clearly with that transition to agency, I, I just wondered what how that might change the dynamic on CarWow. Yeah. Um, I think we we previously sort of speculated that, you know, you, you could become the sort of multi-brand new car marketplace yeah that that's the aim i guess yeah that's how we see it so we'll have the full choice of brands people are cross shopping like nothing else and our view is with particularly with the new car manufacturers coming in from china vietnam america there's more choice than ever for consumers so it's going to be harder and harder for any car manufacturer to fight and I think particularly with the shift to electric, we have a huge over-index on electric. So consumers on car are 40% more likely to buy an electric car. And obviously everyone entering as a new OEM is coming direct or, or some form of agency, and they are coming almost exclusively 100% electric only. So they're using us as that launch pad, and consumers will compare many cars. They'll also compare new versus used. They'll compare new from the car manufacturer versus leasing or subscription or other options. So... We don't mind ultimately what car someone buys. We don't mind how they pay for it. We don't mind what age it is, as long as the consumer feels they've made the right choice for them. That, that's our job. And crucially, you'll you'll not be the platform doing the selling. You will be presenting. Exactly. The we're just the, we're, we're purely the introducer. Yeah. Uh, we'll help if if car manufacturers are paying to promote their cars or surface their models or, or um, campaigns they've got. Then yeah, if they're paying for it, we'll make it clear to the consumer that, that this is a promoted content. But. Um, that's a, it's a big part of our, our revenue, and it's a big part of uh, what car manufacturers need. You, in in that sense, you could be working on very similar terms to the terms that we see franchise retailers working on themselves. I guess. Well, I think I think it's more it's more that we are a marketing channel and an increased consideration channel under an agency model. So the dealers, I think, play less of a role in that under a true, true, true agency where you can't take economic risk. They play less of a role in that. They're more, they're more, uh, they can't control the demand that walks through the door or goes through the, on, online. That's more down to car manufacturers. And that's why we love the agency shift because the car manufacturers will have to work a lot harder on marketing. They'll have to get a lot closer to that point of purchase. And that's exactly where we sit. Absolutely. Um, and it's a, it's a big reason why, I mean, we have Mercedes Invest now, what, three years ago? 
Volvo invested a couple of months ago. Uh, a Geely company invested um, two weeks ago. And again, it's because they all have the, I mean, they're very public now. They all have this path to going direct. W- without naming names, I mean, we, we, we keep hearing a lot of brand names banded around, particularly from China, that yep. are going to come into the market. How much of the res- supply restrictions sort of held a lot of businesses back to this point? Because there are there are a few that we would have expected to be here by now. I agree. I agree. So, so what? I, th- what I think ca- it's held What it can back. we expect to see? Well, I think if you look, so if you look at what's coming, there's a lot of brands that are making a lot of noise. I mean, some of them literally never produced a car, <laughs> not one. But there are a lot that are huge in China. I mean. Uh, BYD, they make more electric cars than Tesla now, including plug-in hybrids, but they make more car, more electric than, than Tesla. And they're not in Europe or barely in Europe. And they're, they're coming. You've got, I think, four big state-owned car manufacturers from China. The Chinese market is not hugely strong at the moment, so they're looking for more avenues. You've got lots of very well-funded American competitors. Uh, uh, Vinfast is an amazing business. They're launching in Germany. We do a lot with them in Germany uh, as their launch partner. And this is this is a challenge to the traditional car manufacturers and to the traditional dealers who are agents or franchises of them. It's a lot of competition. There's really strong product. I don't think many consumers are hung up on the fact it's made in China as a negative. Look how well um, Kia, Hyundai are doing. Made in South Korea. That Some people might have said that was a negative 10, 15 years ago. No one says that to mm. me. Uh, and I think the electric um, technology is often class leading as well. And the price point will be extremely competitive. I, I would I would suggest even that the majority of consumers don't know slash don't care where the car's made. Okay. It's down to does it look nice? Does it do what I want it to do? Is it reliable? Yeah. Is it affordable effectively? Right. And the, the factor that it might be built in China or Vietnam or wherever is is so far down the list if it ticks all those other boxes. I completely agree. I completely agree. And, and particularly at the moment, if they've got access to supply or relatively good delivery times, that's a huge USP. So we do quite a lot with uh, MG, for example, in Germany. I think that's a pretty tough job, selling an old British car brand that's ultimately made in China or Chinese technology to Germans. But what the Germans love is you can get hold of one. Yeah. And, and it's hugely important at the moment. I, th- I think one of the things that always fascinates me about speaking to you, James, is that you always – You've come at the business from a different angle. You, you know, you you don't describe yourself as a car man. You know, I don't I don't think that's a particularly flattering term for anyone. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but how do how do you now feel when people are asking? You know, you, you're on the other side. People will be asking you about the industry and and car buying advice and things. Do you ever reflect on that? You know, now you are you are the you you are the car man to a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, I think it's great that that, that is what we want the brand. Carwell brand to be. We want to be the, the trusted go-to place for consumers to get advice, what car to buy, how to buy it, where to buy it. And that that's our role. So thank you for that. that <laughs> it's not me personally. I don't want me personally to be it. But for a lot of people, it's uh, one of our, uh, Matt, who's our English-speaking uh, video presenter and our chief content officer globally. We have a Spanish presenter, German presenter as well. They play the role of, yeah, what car should I buy? Uh, they complete, they report to me directly and their comp- editorial independence is uh, 100% uh, critical for us gets us into trouble sometimes we're not always polite about every single car in every single way but that's the reality um, we will surface what we think is important and different consumers will care about different things so if you say to someone this car's rubbish to drive for a lot of consumers they just don't care it's mm. not important to them whatsoever yeah. but we're highlighting if it does matter consider it and in reality there's no bad cars really made anymore there's just some cars that are better than other things and again we just want to play that role of surfacing here's all your options you decide we don't mind what you go for we have no financial incentive to push you one way or the other make your choice absolutely and you know we've spoken about how you are as a business very agile and you adapt rather than setting a long-term strategy which is you know just as well the way how quickly the market moves and you're a, te- a technology business, so you, you've now got an understanding of automotive and the technology that's required. What's what's the next priority? What what is you know what market areas do you think hold opportunity for car wire now? So the, the, I think the car manufacturer is huge because because of the agency and the the closeness that they'll get to the consumer and tracking what happens. That's a massive focus for us. 
both the tradi- what I call them the traditional car manufacturers and, and the new breeds, without a doubt. That means the kind of new car work that we'll do with dealers will, over time, as agency comes in, diminish. But they will be more focused, as we've seen already. They will be more focused than ever on used car. Used cars will become even more competitive than it is today because of that focus and because of new entrants. And that's two problems, sourcing stock and then how do you shift that stock as quickly as possible. So that's why we shifted the business into that area to continue that work with franchise dealers and independent dealers now because they're the ones who are coming to us saying, new cars not really our focus at the moment. We're looking at this. Can you do anything there? And when when CarWow was launched around that time and immediately after, we saw an influx of rivals to the established classified yeah, yeah. Uh, option has you know has has is is that more of a priority is that some will you always see yourself as defined from those platforms or are you going to take t- take those guys on as you move into used car more i mean ultimately we'll take those guys head on yeah. i think we know that the, the strength and dominance of auto trader for used cars that's not something to be underestimated. That's not something that we're saying. We're not expecting anyone to say, turn off Auto Trader. We are saying we are a very strong alternative to other marketing you're doing on digital, be it Facebook or uh, Google or some of those kind of second, third rate uh, used car players. That's what we're saying. Like, move your money away from that into this. Because one of the key differences we have is we charge on performance. We're not tying anyone into on anything, on any subscription, any annual contracts. It is, everything is paying on performance. If you don't like the performance, you're not paying for, you're not paying for anything. If you don't like the quality, <coughs> switch us off tomorrow. So not, not where in 12 months you can cancel your contract. It's, if you don't like it, tomorrow, leave. Which is, in a way, risky for Carwell, but we live or die by that. So we're very confident to say, we're putting our, our stall out. This is, this is how much we believe in what we're offering. So you're not you're not going to tie them into twelve months and then put their fees up every April and and that kind of thing. No, if they don't like it tomorrow, they can leave. Okay, interesting. And you mentioned about agency earlier. I mean, I'm interested. Do you think that OEMs will look more closely at the used car market in the future as well? Because when whenever you talk to them, obviously the residual values of new cars is critical for them, and part of that is yeah. completely linked with the 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 supply of used cars into the franchise networks particularly and a lot of them try to repatriate as much yeah. as they can into those networks so do you, do you see OEMs sort of looking more closely and perhaps getting more involved in the used car sector i think yes undoubtedly but probably not particularly soon they've got so much work to do on the new car side and so many hurdles to overcome things to work out and it's amazing how many uh, networks and uh, or brands are moving to agency in not very long. He's talking six months or less. And you ask some dealers who hold the, hold the franchise about it, and they say, "Yeah, we still work that out. Yeah. They still work that out. Not long left." I think with you, that will come after new, after new is quite smooth and, and operating. I yeah. can see why they want to do it 100. Um, it helps with the it could, well, they think it could help with the consumer experience. Um, but uh, what? talking with dealers is the worry is, well, where's the entrepreneurship as a dealer? How do you how do you have any control of your destiny unless you just sit there and have a nice sign above the door? Which is why a lot of them are obviously branching out into non, non-brand non uh, or independent uh, side as well. So they can, they can retain that. But I don't think, I think it'll happen over time, but I don't think it'll happen particularly soon. Because that the, the franchise structure is always struck me as as unique i guess in automotive because you look at you look elsewhere like a mcdonald's franchise yeah, yeah. it is pretty much kind of the same level sometimes questionable service but the same levels of service the same expectations no matter where you go within the country um but franchise dealers do have a level of freedom particularly on the on the used car side to 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 run their own own business and have their name above the door yeah. um, in with certain brands as well. And um, yeah, it's always struck me as something that's, that's particularly unique, but it, it it has been slowly eroded, I guess, over time to to some extent. I agree, and I think the, the, the I mean the, the, the franchise model does set a, a reasonable level of quality in general. One of the things we see though is particularly at the moment where virtually no discounts. So you can't say, oh, that, that deal is selling more because they're covering a bigger discount. I mean, no one's really doing that at the moment at all. You see a huge difference in conversion rate. So not only just within the franchise, but within the group. So let's say you have 10 making up Volkswagen 
sites within the group. There'll still be a huge normal distribution of quality. The car manufacturers sell direct through us who have a lead handling center or, or pass it on to their own dealers. Still, these are humans at the end of the day. There is a difference in quality. And what Carwow does is bias towards, well, what's the point of sending it to that person or that, that side? They're not very good. Quantifiably, they're not very good. Mm. Send it to this one instead. They've got more chance of converting you into the brand. So we move the, the, the customer base around based on that. But at the end of the day, Carwow is not e-commerce. We are still introducing a human, a consumer, to another human, dealer, car manufacturer, leasing company. And how they handle that, that is a huge differentiator. Yeah. Absolutely massive. I'll take you a very, very simple example that I keep banging my head on the table about and the team do is very common at the moment, a customer will ring up a dealer and say, what's the delivery time on a new car? And some of them will factually answer 12 months. And then it's just silence. And then, okay, well, I need a car quicker. Okay, bye. Useless. Give yeah. them an alternative. Even if there's nothing in stock, well, have you considered a used car? Or have you considered this model where if I put you into this one, it's only three months? And it's... It's basic, basic, basic salesperson training, but there's lots and lots of work to be done there. And that's where we spend a huge amount of our time trying to help with that because it'll drive more conversion. The ROI on car leads will be even better. So it, we, we're fully aligned to that as well. Yeah. But, I, I do wonder, even even with the, the, emer- the, the kind of um, move towards direct sales, does that not then just put more onus on the quality of the people in the manufacturer to achieve those levels of fulfillment and ultimately i don't know whether manufacturers have a have a better chance of attracting the right kind of level of people than than dealers i mean dealers certainly they've raised their they've raised their profile they've raised the business they've incredibly professional businesses and they still struggle to get get staff um so it's almost kind of moving moving the problem to the manufacturer in a way i agree and the dealers are the ones who have the history in it they have to they train their staff generally very very well and they've invested a lot in it and again that's where the entrepreneurial spirit of a a dealer can live on because they can put more into it i think the other thing is the car manufacturers don't have these people today largely they they just literally don't have them and again if you i think one or two car manufacturers a bit deluded they think if they have a nice green button that says buy now add to basket place deposit it they're going to sell huge amounts of cars Uh, they're deluded the vast majority of people still want to speak to a customer. Not that many people go on car manufacturer websites uh, today, and it's going to cost them a fortune to try and drive more people into it. The dealers play a very, very critical role in the brand awareness, the brand consideration, and building that trust to make them confident to to place an order. Uh, I think that yeah, that they're missing a trick. And if you look at the move around, or well, take Tesla, or for example. There's a reason they've got lots of showrooms with people sitting in showrooms. Yes, they employ them direct, but they know there's a value there. If you look at the online dealers, there's a reason. Yes, on day one, they, they thought, okay, showrooms, we don't need those. Pretty quickly, they were worked out, actually, we do need those. We do need people on the phone as well because people want to speak to people about this huge, huge, huge purchase or financial commitment, uh, and they're moving that way. Yeah, I think there was, a, there was probably a view as well quite early on that the arrival of EV would see cars become a commodity as well. Yeah. I mean, we, we're nowhere near that stage okay. right now, are we? It's, it's the adoption. It's, you know, okay. people are probably, becoming used pro- to that technology. Pro- probably with EV, given that the majority of people, if they're buying an EV, it's their first EV. Yeah. Even more reason that they want to experience Absolutely. it and talk to someone. There's so much to learn about an EV. And you just got your head around MPG and, and uh, CO2, et cetera. And you've got a rough idea on BHP now, because you've, if you've bought cars for years. Now moving to kilowatts, kilowatt hours, what charges do I need, et cetera. And, and just sitting in an EV and driving it, it's a fantastic experience. It's often quite eye-opening. If once you've tried it, you think, oh, this is, this is fine. This is great. Uh, and again, dealers play a huge role in that transition to electric. Uh, we, we love that trend. And you guys see yourself as a, as a bit of a, an educator and, you know, as, as yeah. a portal. It's, you know, it's you great for us. That. It's great for yeah. us. I mean, again, huge over-index on electric because I think people are doing, as you said, more research. So they're reading more content, they're watching more videos, they want more, they, they ask more questions and, and look stuff up. And uh, and also the car manufacturers, vast majority of our revenue from them in terms of their marketing is them marketing their electric cars. Mm. So yeah, we absolutely love that trend. And I think it's a fantastic trend for the new car market for the next decade at least. Under, underpinning everything that Carwow do is that exposure, isn't it? It's it's your reach. Yeah, exactly. it's, it's your you know your, your product, your editorial, and your video product is is sort of the foundations that 
Yeah. That everything is built on, I guess. Yeah, it, it, it is that. It is. We are. A, we, we have the whole market on us, and there's a lot of choice for a consumer. There are so many different brands. There's, I mean, go used cars, it's just endless choice. Uh, and that's how consumers are shopping. So we give a, a platform to raise awareness and consideration for car manufacturers, dealers, leasing companies, et cetera. No matter what the market, there'll be people looking for information. So. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Fantastic. I Good. think that's a great great point that we, we wrap this up. James, thank you very much for your time time this morning. That's been really, really fascinating. Well, thank you very much for having me. Excellent, Neil. Th- thanks for coming in. Cheers, guys.